Now, from the studios of Into Tomorrow in Miami, this is ITTV. Hey there, welcome back Into Tomorrow and ITTV. I'm Dave Graveline. We've got another exciting and helpful ITTV report for you this week. It's that time of year again. We're going back to school. A recent survey showed that parents are cutting back on plans to purchase electronics during the school year's shopping season. Only one quarter of parents surveyed said that they'd buy computers, phones, and other electronic products for their children this year. But we've chosen a few products that may not break your bank too much. And stay tuned for a special Kids Tech report with some back to school apps in a couple of minutes. But first, Rob is up next with our top choices for some back to school gear. Thanks, Dave. Summer vacation may be ending for some, but you know what makes students feel a lot better about going back to school? New gear, especially tech stuff. Computers are always a must, either a new desktop or a laptop, but you don't have to buy a new computer every year. If your budget doesn't allow for a replacement, why not upgrade the brains? You can buy more RAM, increase processor power, and of course, upgrade to the latest operating system if you haven't yet. If your computer allows it, you can upgrade PCs to a basic version of Windows 7, which can cost just over $120. If you have a Mac, download and install OS X Lion from the App Store for just 30 bucks. You can also consider upgrading old software programs. Start with Microsoft Office, a suite of tools every student needs. The latest student version can be bought for about 120 bucks for PCs and about 150 bucks for Macs. If your computer needs a facelift, you can buy skins for it. You can try skinit.com, one of my favorites, or jelloskins.com. Make your own or browse their gallery and choose one that best fits you. That's a very inexpensive way to make your older gadgets appear to be new. Tablets seem to make it on almost every wish list these days, and helping with school is no different. If your expenses allow, here's what we recommend. This budget-friendly Acer Iconia A500 is a good choice. There are several similarities between the Iconia and the Motorola Zoom. It runs the latest version of Android Honeycomb, currently 3.1, has dual cameras, a 10.1 inch HD display, Wi-Fi connectivity, and the best part, a full USB port. That's something we haven't seen on popular tablets like the iPad or the Zoom. It also has another advantage, the price. We found it online for just under 400 bucks. That's $100 less than the basic iPad 2 model. The only downer is the weight. It's one of the heaviest ones out today. If you can splurge, then the latest tablet in town is the first 4G LTE capable in the US, the Samsung Galaxy Tab 10.1, named 10.1 for the size of the screen. This one is one of our most favorite Android tablets. It's thin and can really compete with the iPad 2. Verizon sells it for about $530. What we love about these tablets is that they can be used to entertain kids of all ages and enrich their education with educational apps. And you don't have to buy tablets for each child. Teach them to share and take turns. By the way, stay tuned for some great apps for students coming up later in this episode. Keep in mind that tablets are not laptop replacements, but they complement each other very well. And if a tablet is not something you want for the kids, there are plenty of laptops available for the same price. Both Tiger Direct and Newegg have laptops under 400 bucks. We hope you enjoyed this year's back to school budget friendly guide. Stop by intotomorrow.com where we'll list more picks and link you to them. Meantime, back to Dave. Thanks, Rob. That's just some of the tech you can consider buying this year for your kids. What do you think? What must you have for back to school this year? Let us know, especially on our radio show. Remember to keep a close eye on electronic sales as you get closer to the first day of school. And shop around online. Newegg.com and TigerDirect.com usually have some of the lowest prices on tech. Technology got you stumped? We can help. Participate on our radio show and win prizes for doing so. You can ask us any consumer tech questions or offer your opinions. Use our free apps for iPhone or Android or call us toll free 24 seven from anywhere in North America, 1-800-899-INTO. That's 800-899-4686. 
It's time for This Week in Tech History, where Chris reminds us of the introduction of a popular way to listen to your favorite music. Here's a hint, it's still around. This week in 1877, Thomas Edison wrote the president of the Telegraph Company in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. The letter stated that the word hello would be a more appropriate greeting than ahoy, as suggested by Alexander Graham Bell when answering the telephone. This week in 1915, Charles F. Kettering of Detroit, Michigan patented the electric automobile self-starter. And it's a good thing he did, or we'd still be cranking our cars by hand. This week in 1937, the first FM radio construction permit was issued. It went to W1XOJ in Boston, Massachusetts. And this week in 1982, the first compact discs, or CDs, were released to the public in Germany. That's our look back at This Week in Tech History. Thanks, Chris. I wonder how long until CDs become extinct. Do you still carry CDs and players instead of digital music players like an iPod, for example? Leave us your comment here or call in. Do you have a small business with IT needs? NewegBusiness.com is making information technology simple with their everyday low prices. Visit NewegBusiness.com for their latest promotions on electronics. Once you know, you knew it. Our youngest tech reporter is starting fifth grade this school year. Caitlin's up next with some of her favorite apps for back to school. Take it away, Caitlin. viewers, I'm Caitlin. Thanks for joining us again. Most of us are excited to start getting ready for school. I know I am. I'm shopping for school supplies and clothes this week, but I'm also shopping for apps for my iPhone and iPad. If you or your parents have any of these devices, I'm going to show you some of my favorite apps for us students, and most of them are free. flashcards from McGraw-Hill are very helpful for us to learn new words or terms and subjects like math or science. You can quiz yourself by guessing the word after reading the definition, or reading the definition and then answering correctly. You can keep track of how many terms you got right and which ones you missed. Aww. Some of the flashcards have audio and read the word and definition. This app is available on the iPhone but can also be used on the iPad and you can add more flashcards to your app for free. Many of us have probably used Wikipedia online to do research for our homework. It's a free encyclopedia we can all use. And it's kept more up to date than the printed encyclopedias some parents have at home. If you like using Wikipedia, there's an iPhone app available for free also. Search for Wikipedia Mobile on the App Store. If you share a room or want to read a book in the dark, check out the iBook Light app on the iPhone. I love to use this late at night when I have reading to do and mom already sent me to bed. It's easy to use. Just open the app and hold the iPhone over the book or magazine you're reading. It's a no-brainer! If you want to know the meaning of a word but don't have a dictionary at home, Dictionary.com is a good website to visit. Well, there's also an app for that. There's one small enough for the iPhone and one big enough for the iPad. There are a lot of things you can do with this app. You can learn a new word every day in English or Spanish. Hola. With the word of the day, you can do a voice search, you can tag your favorite words, and you can share words with friends via email, Facebook, or Twitter. With Dictionary.com, I learned one of the longest English words, anti-disestablishmentarianism. Phew! That word has 28 letters. If you want a good translation app other than Google Translate, Speech Trans is an awesome, fun translator. You can speak or type in your English phrase or word, and it will auto-translate. You can then listen to the translation audio clip, Hola, ¿cómo estás? and you can email the recording. You can also copy and paste the text and then email it, or post on Facebook or Twitter. The ultimate version is a little expensive. It costs 20 bucks, but they have a light version available for free. 
So there you have it. Those are our top five back to school apps this year. You can add more apps to our list. Leave me a comment here with your app suggestions for back to school. They could be educational games, homework reminders, brain teasers, and more. Thanks for watching. Oh, and don't forget to visit us at kidstech.tv and like us on Facebook. I'm Caitlin, and I'll see you very soon. Bye! Thanks, Caitlin. Good stuff. And it's great when you have free resources like those apps. Don't you just love technology? If you're not yet getting our free once a week tech newsletter or have yet to follow us on Twitter or like us on Facebook, please tap on over to intotomorrow.com at your earliest convenience. That wraps it up for this week's ITTV show. We hope you share this info with anyone you know that's getting ready to start school. Thanks for watching. I'm Dave Graveline. Stay tuned. Ha, ha, ha.